good morning or rather good afternoon <laughs> so let's go ahead and discuss another uh, scenario based question of adc exam and uh, currently we are on week 3 of uh, september 2024 preparation of course um, any new candidate who wants to join you can join at any time and start following the study plan but all those people who have just started studying with me we are currently on week 3 and uh, yeah you'll have your third mock to be solved this week i'm getting your messages and i'm getting a lot of new messages as well uh nice nice to know that many people are interested in studying in advance for the exam that's that's the way it should be so anyways let's give you a gist again for all the new candidates how to solve the question it's how you analyze the question and for all the older ones uh, another question explanation session uh, always remember in ADC, it's not an MCQ based exam. It's you have to choose the most appropriate answer, meaning all the five options can be correct. You have to choose which is the most appropriate in the given scenario. Okay, so let's start. A 44 year old female patient came to you complaining of pain and swelling. There is a swelling caused by chewing on the lower molar. This tooth had a temporary filling temporary filling that's my keyword here which has been lost for a few weeks now so basically the tooth is open radiographic examination showed a previous endodontic therapy with a silver cone in the mesial root of the tooth and a periomacular lesion okay complex case i would say looking at the iopa we see the tooth in question we see a dark uh, radio opaque line, probably that's the silver cone we are talking about. And uh, the patient is complaining of pain and swelling. So whenever there is a swelling and you see the tooth is RC treated, uh, immediately two things should branch out in your mind. One is it's a RCT failure, reinfection. And the second is because there is no crown over the tooth, it's probably a fracture okay a vertical root fracture any of these two things can happen and your treatment would be based on diagnosing what has happened because if it's a root canal failure your approach would be to retreat the tooth at least give that option and if it's a vertical fracture you just have to extract it so you really need to diagnose this well so now there is a history now you have seen multiple keywords in this question it's rct treated Silver cone is not that kind of a keyword for me. Fine, an obturating material is there, it's, but it's not relevant to me at the moment. So there is a root canal treated tooth. There is a temporary filling which has been lost. The tooth is open. The patient is having pain and swelling. Now, how, how am I going to diagnose and treat this case? So let's go to the first question. I did a percussion test which gave a positive result. So basically, when I tapped on the tooth, the patient said, ouch what other test is required now see already i have the iop and i've already done percussion now what did i say the two things that branches out in my mind one is what the one is rct failure and one is root canal fracture now to to determine if there is a, a vertical fracture of the root i will only determine that by moving a probe around it because uh, if it's a vertical fracture i will definitely find a nice pocket because pus is getting accumulated in that area. So let's see what are the options. Mobility. Tooth may or may not be mobile, so it's not a ideal test. Use air from the triplex syringe. Um, see, air from the triplex syringe, what, what does it do? It, it If you use it on a normal tooth, it's going to blast the odontoblast out there, which will pull the nerve and uh, it will create pain, but there is no nerve. So blast from the air is not going to help you. That would have helped you to determine if the tooth was sensitive or alive. Vitality test out of question again, there is no pulp. Sensi sensibility test, same thing, <laughs> there is no pulp. <laughs> probing. So if I was, I mean, I, if I were to get confused rather, probing and mobility are the two options in which I would be confused. But mobility again is not very reliable because in a lot of RC cases, uh, if the root is not fractured or even if it's fractured, the tooth may or may not be mobile, honestly. But probing will definitely give me some idea because in case there is a fracture in the root, there would be a pocket. 
so probing is my answer of choice see now when you understand the concept it becomes really easy to solve this question the diagnosis was of chronic apical periodontitis how would you manage that so now the second question is actually giving up the diagnosis so it says basically that there is no vertical root fracture it's the question itself has ruled out that possibility and it said it's chronic apical periodontitis basically probably it's a infected case of the rct and it's been inflaming the pdl space and now it's become a nice perio lesion okay so what what how would you manage extract it's not a wrong option actually you can refer to endodontist for retreatment i would choose this option more because i can i mean it's always better to save the tooth but it's not wrong to extract and put an implant either crown lengthening uh that is not going to solve my problem of pain and swelling refer to prosto again that is not going to solve my problem of pain and swelling currently what are my issues the symptoms pain and swelling i have to fix that so either i can extract or i can refer to endodontist for the retreatment and and this i have to explain to the patient so i'll I, i'm left with only two options so both a and b options are correct okay how will you manage you'll have to ask the patient but in the exam you can choose either a or either option b but if you still have to choose one option like for sure short then i would choose option b because like i said saving the tooth is way more important than extracting once it's extracted it's extracted so i would go with option b as the answer here patient agrees to the treatment you suggested but he wants some time to think about the treatment option okay so the question doesn't say what treatment have i suggested and uh, what is the patient going to think about it but then at the for the meantime how am i how am i going to restore the tooth temporarily so the question is very specifying the keyword that you have there is a hole you know the temporary filling was there and it's lost and it's a big hole the food is going to get stuck there so uh, for the temporary basis how you're going to fix that tooth sealing with gic the most easiest option flowable composite composite is not that strong so i'm not going to go with that especially the flowable one uh use preformed tem crowns as template uh not a wrong option you can choose that but it's using just as a template but how are you restoring it so it doesn't mention which which filling you're going to put make him a tem crown with pro tem see making him a temp crown with pro tem is again not a wrong option but here the tooth is not prepared you don't have a i mean you'll have to make a putty index and then you have to pour it then you have to prepare a crown over that and then again make a putty index it's a lot time consuming process not a wrong option but uh, are you going to do that in the clinic wasting like 1 1 and 1/2 hours in doing all that no so go with sealing with gic that's the best option amongst all you inform the patient that this would not have happened if timely they had got their final restoration which is probably the crown uh and that the final restoration is very important the patient said he was never told by the previous dentist about the crown and was upset that he was not informed because now he has to suffer through all this because he was not informed so what are you going to advise see whenever you tell the patient this should have been done or even in your own practice or even in my practice when i encounter such a thing and the patient blatantly says that no the previous doctor never said this to me about it please don't believe the patient's words you know probably the dentist did and the patient didn't listen or probably the dentist did not but you don't know the scenario but either ways you cannot just take the side of the patient and blame your own colleague even if you don't know that dentist you will always try to be diplomatic and be ethical and give everybody a benefit of doubt right i mean imagine you are that person who are, who is telling the patient after root canal see you have to come back for the crown and the patient doesn't come goes to some other dentist after two years with a fractured tooth and and tells that dentist that you did not tell them about the crown and imagine that that is fighting with the patient and the patient coming back and uh, suing you etc stuff uh you would think right why didn't the other dentist ask you about it so when the patient is complaining to you you don't be that other dentist okay respect your profession respect your professional colleagues give everybody a benefit of doubt okay and never just directly trust the patient so let's see the options here and this is a very important question you should never make a mistake in professional ethical questions 
offered to ask for his records from previous dentist after his science record release form. A good, good option. Ask him to talk to the previous dentist and ask for explanation. Not a wrong option. If option A wasn't there, I would probably choose option B. Ask patient to complain about the dentist. No. No matter what happens, you will never incite or instigate a patient. Ask patient to take advice from Afra ADA. Asking the patient to go to Afra again is like instigating the patient to go to Afra, uh, complain against the patient or find how he can complain against the other dentist. No, 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 no. You're not going to do that. Ask him to take legal advice. Again, going legal or something is just inciting or instigating the patient. Try to resolve a amicably the thing, you know. As, like I said, you can be that other dentist also someday. So, uh, offer to ask for his records. So, you basically tell the patient that let me read the records what the other dentist have written and we can discuss more about it. So, it's not a good idea just to give a call directly and ask the dentist, why did you not tell the patient about this? No, you don't know the scenario, what had happened. Maybe the dentist has a different story and you will come to know probably the patient is cooking up a story or something. So, always first go and see the records of what the other dentist has written in the notes after the patient signs a release form. If that option is not given, then you can go for the option B, like ask the patient to go back to the dentist and ask for an explanation. So this is how the hierarchy would go. Even in my clinic uh, where we have a multi-specialty uh, clinic and the patient comes and says something, the first thing I tell him, let me read the notes of the previous dentist, okay, because it reflects in my system. If I can't find the notes, then I will tell the patient, how about you go back and talk to the dentist or if you would like me to talk to the dentist because we are working in the same clinic and ask about uh, what was the procedure done. Only if the patient consents to it, then only I will go and ask the dentist. I won't just take up my phone and call, hey, I got your patient, etc., etc. But the first step is always I will look for the records, what has the dentist written in the notes, even before I think of giving the option to the patient of calling the other dentist. That is how you maintain professional ethics, okay? Now, how will you prevent any misunderstanding during communication with the patient? Misunderstanding means uh, you being very clear in whatever you have spoken and that you maintain a record about it. So make a sound record, good option. Explain everything to the patient verbally. You have to. Explain everything to the patient by writing. Not possible in every scenario. Explain everything to the patient and record it in his notes. This is the best option. See, sometimes I get patients uh, who are Russians and Koreans and Chinese and uh, they speak proper their language and not English. So it becomes a big communication barrier between me and the patient. But of course, Google Translate helps. So what I do is I write everything in layman terms. Okay. And the translate option reflects on the other side in their own language. So once they read, they understand and they say, go ahead or even they translate and show me. I copy paste that entire layman thing that I have written and I post it in the patient's notes so that the communication is very clear as to what I have spoken. If the patient can speak English, then it's good to just communicate and then my notes for the patients are very short that this, this, this has been told. But when you are communicating to a patient via any other means, then you record and document that entire conversation after verbally speaking, taking a consent and then putting it in your notes. So the wholesome option out here is option D. Explain everything to the patient and record this in his notes. With this uh, questionnaire, I have given you a lot of tips of how to practice clinically. Recording in the notes is more for your safety as well. Because, see, you may change your clinic, the patient may go elsewhere, somebody else might want that record, and you cannot uh, remember everything you have ever said. So it's always better to be documented in the notes, everything. That's for your own safety and it's it's a good guideline also, you know, you know what treatment has been done if any other dentist has to go and work on that patient also. Basically, when a patient comes to you, uh, it's your due responsibility to document everything that the patient has for the overall well-being for everybody, honestly. So, I hope this is clear. Ethics is very important. Documentation is very important. Diagnosing the lesion is very important. Uh, any other questions just leave it in the comment section and uh, yeah it's always nice to talk to you guys i really like answering your questions and uh, i really like reading your comments so do write that it also motivates me to make more videos thank you bye bye